good evening. Um, as Tom mentioned, I'm, I'm Melissa. I'm a VP on Bear Capital's venture capital team. Um, and I also have the honor to introduce our um, Investor Hall of Fame inductee, Joe, Joe Hillebrand. Um, you know, Joe has had an incredible career as an investor and, and lawyer. Uh, among his many accomplishments, he co-founded two Wisconsin early stage funds um, and has invested in more than 80 private companies. Joe is also co-founder uh, and managing director of the Invest Tech Fund and Phenomenal Angel Angels Fund and remains active in Wisconsin Investment Partners. He's a partner emeritus at Folly and Lardner, where he was founder and chair of the firm's emerging companies and, and venture capital team and founder and co-chair of its PE and VC practice. Over his 30-year career, Joe structured more than 300 private placement uh, offerings and, and was and held senior level positions um, at an investment brokerage firm and, and also at a hedge fund. Uh, Joe's impact on the early stage economy here in Wisconsin is uh, monumental. Uh, so, you know, without further ado, please help me welcome uh, our 2022 inductee to the Tech Council's Investor Hall of Fame, Joe Hillbrand. Um, first of all, I want to um, thank the uh, Wisconsin Tech Council and the prior recipients for um, rewarding me with this uh, induction to the Investor Hall of Fame. Um, I very humbly uh, accept it, uh, especially with respect to seeing the tremendous 10 people previously who have re received it. Um, <clears throat> uh, I would like to um, uh, next introduce my immediate family who is here, my wife Beth, my um, daughter Valerie and her her uh, husband Michael, and my daughter Tiffany and her husband Nate. Uh, I would uh, <clears throat> introduce uh, my son Derek and uh, Tanya. However, they are imminently expecting uh, their first child out in, uh, out in California. Um, <clears throat> I would like to um, talk a little bit about how we and the state can help grow the early stage uh, ecosystem uh, here, in, here in Wisconsin which I have um, been seriously interested in for uh, a number of years. Um, and I would like to talk about <clears throat> how I ended up getting uh, to that point where uh, I felt it was something which I could make a contribution to and I thought, <clears throat> some 40, 50 years ago, it was something that was, was needed. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, in, uh, in law school, I um, <clears throat> had my uh, broker's license and with a few other people in connection with that firm, um, started uh, a hedge fund and then an arbitrage fund. Uh, <clears throat> we ran into an issue and uh, went to New York uh, to get a law firm to help us out of it and ended up settling on a boutique law firm specializing in securities, um, <clears throat> which was Burlak Israels and Liberman. Carlos Israels was a significant player in, in drafting the 33 Act. And his book was used as a basis for practitioners. Uh, 
they, they solved uh, our problem in a very unique way. And um, <clears throat> uh, their practice was such that they worked with startups at the very beginning from incorporating and organizing it for which um, they uh, made no charge other than they took initial stock for that, uh, which I thought was very unique. And uh, they went through all the guidelines that they had to do to do that. But from there, the ones that they selected all the way up to IPOs. Uh, <clears throat> and um, the, uh, I was out at the house of one, one of the partners um, up, in, uh, up in Scottsdale, and he took me to, out to the uh, back of his house where he had this huge veranda, which was all covered and had all sorts of games and toys and interesting things. And he said, this is my scan data room. I said, what do you mean your scan data room? He said, well, we incorporated it, took a little stock, and then when we took it public, this was from the proceeds of my proceeds from, from that. <clears throat> I always thought that was interesting, and I, I actually ended up uh, being a one-man committee for Foley quite a few years later about the possibility of taking equity, Foley taking equity for different potential things. Uh, <clears throat> one thing uh, out of that uh, uh, Engaging that firm um, while still in law school was that they ended up uh, making me an offer of which I accepted and uh, worked for the firm for approximately five years. Again, it specialized in, uh, in SEC work um, and uh, five years came, it was time to uh, move the family um, and uh, I was talking with a uh, uh, firm in San Francisco and Minneapolis when uh, Foley and Lardner came knocking on my door and after some serious negotiations I eventually accepted uh, uh, over after a hundred years I was the first uh, attorney that they ever hired out of another firm. Um, <clears throat> and it was to do SEC um, and securities work, including IPOs and, and tender offers, um, and which um, there were a number uh, of them in the in the works at that point, uh, without people who really specialized in that area, and I act as sort of a, an expert for the senior partner who was in charge of those clients um, um, for a number of years. Um, the, uh, um, the the public offerings. Uh, dried up uh, to somewhat uh, along that time in the mid-70s um, in Milwaukee, and I began doing more work in connection with the Wisconsin Securities Division in connection with earlier stage companies, uh, and uh, in connection with uh, Wisconsin's merit regulation and uh, takeovers um, to the extent that uh, I ended up with a couple of other people opening up the Madison office uh, in 1976. Um, <clears throat> and at that point, um, Wisconsin Securities Office was uh, uh, tasked with um, 
representing um, most of the states in connection with um, public offerings and connection with uh, tender offers because they were a merit state which meant that before they would approve the, an offering um, they made a decision that it had to be fair on its, uh, on its face uh, either in connection with the statute, their regulations, or their uh, drawer, drawer regulations, which meant if they didn't find something else, there was a regulation in the drawer which they could use. Um, <clears throat> uh, ended up working on legislation to modify um, uh, the merit regulation uh, to get some uh, very specifics and a lot of this had to do with early stage, uh, early stage companies. And similar um, in connection with the takeovers on a national basis, um, the practical aspect was you had to get approval from the SEC and then you had to get approval from Wisconsin because the other states were basically deferring to Wisconsin. So we got um, uh, a lot of uh, major um, tasks in connection with getting approval for takeovers and, and uh, we would have uh, private jets coming from, uh, coming from the West Coast to stop by Madison to uh, uh, pick me up and then pick up somebody else from our office in Milwaukee and out to the moon and Wisconsin became a major player in connection with, with that area. Um, uh, I ended up having about 20, 20 people uh, between Milwaukee and Madison assigned to doing Real estate, uh, real estate offerings, which we ended up um, with um, having standard documents, standard fixed fees, et cetera, to basically almost on an assembly line um, uh, work out uh, uh, offering documents uh, uh, and negotiations. To go through the uh, the full task of the uh, of the offering. Um, <clears throat> during that uh, time, there was also also um, offering for hotels, um, uh, which were startup businesses, um, and and we worked for a number of the uh, companies. Uh, in the state, um, it, we, it was a period in which uh, there was a lot of legislation uh, being passed in Wisconsin in the uh, early stage in business area um, and uh, did a lot of drafting in connection with uh, requests from different agencies in the, in the, uh, in the state. Customers and clients. Uh, there's a Freemer series of six basically different pamphlets here in connection with the um, Primer Primer series for emerging companies. Um, the uh, Department of Development brochure on venture financing, raising raising capital in Wisconsin. A similar one in a different year for the Department of Commerce. And in 2001, the governor asked me to um, put together some proposals for the state to encourage 
emerging growth companies and enhanced venture capital investment in Wisconsin, of which I did one with uh, significant effort by a number of, of <clears throat> other people uh, at Foley and by the Securities Commissioner's Office and, uh, and the Department of Commerce um, to do the 50 proposals. And in the following year, a similar one for 44 new proposals. Um, <clears throat> after uh, after the uh, first one, I was uh, <coughs> I was approached by Senator Ted Canvas, saying, "Okay, which which of those fifty are the most important? What would you select?" I said, "As an attorney, it was important." for the shareholder wage claim uh, status to change without going into details that would prevent Wisconsin as the only state in which you couldn't give a clean opinion in connection with an offering because it was always subject to shareholder wage claims. Also with CAPCO, which were busy at that time, but I said, I thought, I thought, out of all of them, it was probably the tax credit for early stage comp technology companies, which was uh, most important from the point of view of the long-term nature. Um, Senator Cannabis uh, took hold of that and uh, introduced legislation in connection with it and it ended up uh, taking a couple of years being um, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, law on the 25 or 25% tax credit which I will talk a little bit, a little bit later on um, personally I had an affinity for early stage uh, private companies while working in New York one thing I saw was that uh, there was a significant amount, at least in the late 60s and early 70s, of insider trading, such that uh, I felt that any investment, uh, certainly in a uh, public offering, but uh, in any major transaction, uh, you were about 25% behind uh, behind the market if you didn't have insider information in connection with it. It was very widespread as has been covered by um, Adam Smith and a number of a number of others. Um, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> was close to me from the point of view that there were a secretary in our office, there was uh, an associate in our office, which uh, unbeknownst to uh, himself, he ended up being part of an insider uh, trading scam. Um, <clears throat> and as a result of that, I um, decided not to invest in public companies, but to focus more on private companies for my for myself. <clears throat> and since then, other than retirement funds, um, uh, I have uh, focused my, as, an, as an attorney, as uh, an investor and as an advisor, I have focused uh, significantly on uh, on private startup companies. Just uh, talking here at, at the dinner table, and my daughter Valerie mentioned the fact that, uh, that her proceeds from one private uh, company and encourage all three of my children to invest in, in um, 
interesting companies. She uh, invested her funds in a Park Street bakery, which was a startup. And the one, one of the reasons for that was her dividend was every month she got a pie. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <clears throat> um, uh, Tom talked a little while ago about the long-term investment, one of the early investments I invested in along with a um, uh, few other people in the firm was a company called Medical Devices Group. It had a um, new technology for a ear implant, and um, on, on Monday, I got a call from someone who was one of our investors that said, after we had uh, transferred it to some executives of Medtronic, that uh, they and Mayo Clinic um, did a actual operation uh, with the complete inner ear for the, uh, for the first time on three individuals. Uh, on, on Monday I got the call and this was 20, 29 years after our investment. Um, uh, and follow up some other ones we've heard some of them somewhat took a while as Capital Bank is now, um, uh, we started that uh, some 27 seven years. Uh, it's a private offering, um, Shockley, Aerogen, Jellyfish, Traffic Gas, Phoenix Shine, and, uh, and Quincy, which you will hear more about next year. Um, are things that I have focused on um, and going away to some extent from the public field. Uh, I have uh, um, invested in a lot of different uh, uh, early stage companies such that uh, in many years my K-1s are in excess of 40 and my tax return is in excess of 200 pages. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> my accountant likes it, but uh, it's a little bit difficult uh, uh, going after those K-1s every year. Um, <clears throat> uh, more recently, uh, I've been um, in Investing in funds um, similar to Source and to Vet from others. Uh, invested in venture investors, invested uh, quite a bit in WIP, Kaganza, and um, uh, <clears throat> after um, uh, tax credits, getting uh, getting approved and on. Uh, uh, in part because of that, I set up uh, two angel funds, uh, uh, Phenomenal Angels, which was a women's only fund, and, uh, and Dane Best, uh, both of which are in their liquidation phase at this point, and uh, we need to sell, sell the last couple companies on them. Uh, which brings me to my background in connection with early stage and now I'd like to make some suggestions as to how we and the state can help with the early stage uh, uh, eco uh, system um, and I think one of the first things is all of us are in the space, all of us can do things with regard to referrals. 
especially if involved in doing articles or speeches or conferences like this, um, you become known and, and you can use referrals to help new companies, to help investors. Um, because of the time period, I wasn't going to mention, but uh, Lori convinced me to tell a story about uh, Roger Ganser. Um, <clears throat> he was uh, working with a company, uh, basically a um, Madison Development Company, uh, in the in the early early years. Was representing him, and he came to me saying, "Is yeah, I get a little funding from the city, but it's not really enough to make any significance in connection with it." And as I recall, the story went. I said, "You know, you're raising money all the time, and what what do I do? How do I do?" And I said, "Well, you got to find the the right people." right source of the investors. You, you, you really need somebody with credibility, et cetera. So we talked about three different names and uh, uh, he ended, ended up suggesting that uh, Roth Schleck, who was president of First Wisconsin, was somebody that we ought to talk to. We went downstairs in the bank. We had offices there and talked to, talk to Roth, he said, eh, it sounds interesting, let me, let me think about it. The next day I get a call from a secretary saying, Roth wants you to meet with him uh, and Roger for, for lunch uh, in two days. Uh, fine, we do that. We go there and um, go into a room at the Madison Club, and here is Roth with, um, I think, seven other gentlemen, and um, the waiter comes in and Roth says, no, no, give, give me five minutes, and we'll take our orders. Roth says, Roger and Joe has this idea about helping businesses in Madison, not quite exactly what the money's going for, or what's going to happen with it, but uh, First Wisconsin, we're going to put in 200000 American Family, you're going to put in 200000 you're going to put in 100000 I think. mg and &E, forget the number, you're going to put in this, you're going to put in this, you're going to put in this. Uh, any questions, any objections? <laughs> Have the waiter come in. <laughs> Up to you. Easy way to easy way to raise money. Um, okay. Um, uh, referrals. Um, I once got a call from a man named uh, Marty Cooper. Uh, he, Marty said, "I'm in Chicago. Uh, I've started up a new company in." Silicon Valley, uh, my attorney said he heard you out in California give some kind of speech and I need to talk to you. So he came up and met with me in, in the office, first Wisconsin building again, and um, he said, and so I look up Marty Cooper. Marty Cooper was a top engineer at Motorola. Marty Cooper is the one given credit for inviting the cell phone, inventing the cell phone. I saw like eight years ago or so, Motorola had a number of TV ads in which Marty Cooper was there uh, playing the part of an actor in the streets of Chicago talking on this big, huge cell phone and claiming that was the first first call that was made on the cell phone. In any case, Marty had an idea for something different. Um, 
he said that uh, in Silicon Valley, he thought the valuation for his new company uh, was, was too low. He didn't like the terms. And his attorney uh, suggested that uh, uh, when he went back to Chicago, he talked to people there and he did nothing to come and see me. Um, uh, I eventually um, talked to a friend of mine who got together some golfing buddies and I got together a couple professional football players that I represented and uh, uh, we put in the initial seed money for two rounds uh, for a company called Raycom which had abandoned technology for the arrays for cell phones to go around buildings and everything else and eventually uh, there were a number of uh, uh, major venture capital companies from Silicon Valley that also jumped on board. There were a number of big authors for lots of dollars that uh, were presented uh, to the company and which the venture capital firms turned down, uh, and Marty turned down too. Um, I thought they were pretty good. Now, some 20 years later, I still own the stock, and I think it can be used for wallpaper. <laughs> the technology has surpassed, but uh, again, uh, re uh, referrals. Um, uh, the, uh, Tech Council does a good job, a great job in terms of uh, conferences like this, in terms of getting people gathered, gathering, having, having time for uh, a drink happy hour, which is really a contact uh, uh, time. And uh, the other things which, uh, which all of us can help in connection with passing on um, uh, different companies, different different uh, uh, possibility opportunities. Uh, the second thing is assisting in uh, assisting investors. Another thing to help the ecosystem. Uh, <clears throat> I think the uh, uh, chapter two fifty five. Tax credits uh, were uh, we're not using 50% of what is newly authorized in connection with it, and I think the reason for that is there are a lot of restrictions on who can use uh, the tax credits, which you don't initially see, but uh, accountants, for example putting in a lot of new software or new technology or whatever aren't, aren't allowed, uh, doctors aren't allowed, retail companies, Best Buy, if they wanted to upgrade some technology in their stores, wouldn't be, wouldn't be allowed. If the headquarters of a company is a mile across the border of Illinois or Minnesota, they wouldn't be allowed. If they had 101 employees, it couldn't do it. Uh, my feeling is, if we can get somebody to put in $10 million in technology in Wisconsin, and uh, that technology will end up uh, uh, with jobs, with uh, much more multiple of taxes, increased economy in Wisconsin, the technicalities of, of uh, prohibiting various people uh, to take advantage of that, I, I, I don't think is, uh, uh, is something that we need at this point. Uh, there are other restrictions in there. Um, uh, if I invest, uh, <clears throat> if I invest ten ten thousand dollars. I get a 25% tax credit, and, and uh, my wife uh, does 10,000, but she does it through a 
fund, uh, she can sell the tax credit, whereas I can't. Uh, I don't. I don't understand the difference in that. Uh, I think a lot of the restrictions could be loosened up, and we could take more advantage of those. Uh, I think uh, uh, there are some restrictions on um, uh, tax deferrals. Reinvestment in, in Wisconsin technology, which I think some of those restrictions could be removed. I think uh, you know, Wisconsin uh, technology companies um, uh, could be helped in their startup stage if you could get a write off for some of their losses and expenses uh, right on rather than uh, having them go over 30 years or. 15 or whatever. Um, <clears throat> I think someone could take a look at a uh, uh, problem with uh, illiquidity in, in private early stage investments, maybe some kind of a marketplace for Wisconsin uh, non-public uh, uh, companies uh, to avoid things like the Promega issue with uh, shareholders and, and yield liquidity. Um, <clears throat> a third thing that I think could could help the uh, ecosystem is um, is to increase the assistance, the encouraging, the promotion of early stage companies. Council does a good job on, on some of these and the statistics in connection with it and spread it out. But I think the state could even do more in connection with PR on the amount of technology angel investments, um, the, uh, the funds, the networks, the resources that are available through the different universities, the R&D, quality of life, um, more could be done in connection with the workforce, free computer training, um, technology and management uh, training with uh, uh, aid given out based on need, uh, state internships, etc. More focus could be done in connection with airport flights, transportation, electric car charging, broadband throughout the state. Um, and um, I also suggest that it could be helpful to create a position which would be the Wisconsin Secretary, Secretary of Technology full-time cabinet officer that could um, work with the governor and the legislator to source, drive, coordinate, oversee uh, synergistic uh, investments, developments, growth, and deployment of early stage uh, cutting edge technology uh, benefiting the state and the citizens uh, by having one person with responsibility and a focus to um, have that be his uh, primary task. Um, and last, uh, uh, don't want to bring up a sore subject, but uh, like to leave on something positive, but um, there is a continued problem. Um, we have for the last 20 plus years been extremely successful in increasing angel investments. The amount uh, that we have now, uh, the funds that we have now, et cetera, uh, substantial increase in getting angels um, uh, to invest, the sources of them and the, um, <clears throat> the people around to to help doing it in a systematic way uh, through, um, uh, 
through different entities, uh, through uh, help from uh, the Tech Council, uh, etc., has substantially been uh, uh, a great success. Um, and has developed tremendous, tremendous technology in a lot of different areas. The problem is, in a number of cases, that um, there's lack of sufficient follow-on funding. Um, that uh, obviously all the all the the, the angel um, uh, funded companies are not going to make it, they're not going to develop the technology, but there are a number of them that seem to develop the technology but don't have the funding because the angels run out of money or running out, run out to put money in the fifth round or they're out of their time period and it's time for some larger funding uh, to come from institutions, from venture capital firms, from corporations, um, uh, from uh, state entities, uh, from a war, sort of, uh, universities, uh, and uh, it's something that we should focus on if there are incentives that are needed, what are those incentives? Are they tax incentives? Are they uh, different tax credits? Whatever, but uh, we need to find a situation where there's sufficient follow-on funds to uh, take this, uh, this developed technology and um, Get it nationally commercialized uh, to the uh, to the next level. It's it's becoming a, uh, a death gap for a number of companies that have successfully developed technology, uh, and it's something that uh, uh, it would be helpful to find some additional incentives or means to increase possibility of, of seeing if we can get some additional players to help fill, help fill that gap. Um, there has been a suggestion that uh, some of the institutions set aside certain funds uh, or, or whatever for uh, these uh, developed Wisconsin companies, but uh, uh, I'm one for suggesting that it is an area of focus that would be very helpful. And I thank you. Uh, I thank you all for coming. And if there are any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer them.